Hello and welcome back to Strathpeffer Junction. Um, I've got a quick video and uh, this time it really is a fairly quick video, it's not, not a half hour job, um, but a, a very quick video just about my, my decoder tester. Now I featured this in my video on the Hornby Class 31 TTS decoder installation um, and I had a, a couple of comments, uh, I can't remember if it was on YouTube or, or one of the Facebook forums, just about the tester, if I thought it was worthwhile buying one uh, and uh, you know how I got on with it. So first of all, it's really worthwhile getting one of these. Um, the brand new ones, uh, they're about 40 to 50 pounds, it's a lot, it is a lot of money if you're not going to use it much, but you can pick up these old ones like I've got here for more like 10 or 15 quid. Um, and if you could find one of those on, on eBay or any other site uh, for that sort of money, grab one because they're still really useful. And with the, the modification that I'm going to show you, you all today, uh, you can you can use it uh, with, with any type of decoder that's, that's up to date and, and fits in. Um, so the main thing to mention was um, this is an old one and it was designed to work really with a lock sound 3.5 or earlier. Uh, and that was with 100 ohm speakers, whereas as we all know that the new lock sound and the, the Zemos and so on have an 8 ohm speaker or four, four, four or eight ohm speaker. Um, so this one has a 100 ohm speaker. Now that is okay, you can use that with a, a lock sound four. All it means is the sound will be you know, notably quieter uh, because the impedance is greater, uh, it'll be notably quieter. Uh, but you can't use it the other way around. So you, you can't use a four ohm speaker with a lock sound 3.5 because that will probably destroy the chip. But it, you can plug in anyway that the, the lock sound fours into this. Um, but, as we all know as well, sometimes these chips will come with a speaker on board and you won't necessarily want to be paralleling up a 100 ohm speaker with a 4 ohm speaker or 8 ohm speaker that might be on it. Anyway, so cut a long story short, I thought it'd be really good to add in the function of switching on and off this speaker. So it gives you the option of not using it and using whatever the chip might come hardwired to. Um, so the way that I thought I would do that would be to, to 3D print it. Uh, to make it look really neat. And what I'm going to do in this video is just talk through the, the, the very briefly the stages of designing it, uh, slicing it up, getting it 3D printed, and then just very quickly how I installed it. Um, now I've already installed this one on here, so I'm not going to take it to bits again, uh, but I have a another one here, uh, a blank, <laughs> to show you uh, uh, later on in the video, just the, the process of, of sticking things together for that. Um, now, one thing to mention is if you do like this, what I've done, uh, and you have one of these and you like to modify it, I have made available the, the 3D um, file for this, so you can download and print it off yourself if you like that, and I'll provide a, a link in the description. So before I move on to the computer side of the video, um, I just wanted to very quickly talk through what I had in my mind when I wanted to, to do this. Um, the board itself originally just came with the speaker in this recess and it was hardwired into the two wee solder tabs here on the side. Uh, so that meant it was always on um, and uh, you can switch it off. I, I didn't want to be too invasive uh, in the project so I wanted it to fit in comfortably here without obscuring any of the text or any of the guidance on it and to avoid all of the, the copper tracks and so on as well on the back. So minimal or minimalist was the way I wanted to go um, so I thought I'll use the same space, I'll just fit in the um, the extra part uh, in this area here, keep it quite shallow and then uh, have a little bit here for the switch um, so we can switch that speaker on and off. So that was the basic principle, minimal intervention um, and uh, make it neat and tidy and uh, hopefully look quite professional. Okay so as I mentioned um, I used SketchUp, formerly Google SketchUp, to um, to design the, the plastic part that uh, I, I printed. Um, now, there's a variety of different software tools that you can use to, to design things in 3D. I like SketchUp for simple stuff because it's pretty easy to use and get your head around relatively quickly. But there's other free options as well. Um, Autodesk uh, Fusion 360 is an excellent product, uh, more powerful than SketchUp. Uh, it's brought to, to us by the, the same manufacturer as AutoCAD. Um, which you may have heard of. Um, but Fusion C60, while it's free, um, it, it takes a lot more getting used to. You have to spend a lot more time using it. So if you just want to knock up something quite quickly, I really do recommend SketchUp. Now, it doesn't naturally come with an export function for, for 3D printing, but you can, through the, uh, the extensions, you can go to the extension warehouse uh, and you can type into the search bar when it pops up, 
uh, and, and look for STL or 3D printing plugins uh, and uh, you can download a plugin there. Now I've done that and having added the plugin to SketchUp, uh, we'll pop, pop up there, I've now got the option here to export to STL. Now I've got two that do it actually, but this is the one I normally use. So I'm not going to go through how to use SketchUp to design things uh, because that's a, a number of videos all, all in itself. But uh, suffice to say, I, I use SketchUp to, to design this little, uh, this little modification piece for the decoder. Um, the way I approached it was that I wanted to have minimal impact on the actual uh, decoder tester itself. So I really designed this to fit with the, the existing dimensions and the existing holes uh, with one small um, exception, which is these two holes here, this one here and this one here do have to be drilled through the, the PCB. But uh, this hole here anyway, this is the same size as the speaker uh, hole in the, the manufactured PCB as, as the decoder tester comes. Um, and uh, here we have a slot for the, the two-way switch and we have two little holes here uh, to allow us to, to fix the, the bracket really to, to the existing PCB. And on the side, I've just put on off so you know which, uh, <laughs> which way the switch goes uh, and also 100 ohms just to remind me that uh, this particular speaker is a 100 ohm speaker um, because uh, they can all look very similar and if you don't dismantle it or you don't uh, have your tester to hand it can sometimes be hard to tell a difference. Now on the reverse of it, um, it's not very exciting but there's recesses here. Now this is where the soldering work goes on so the, the various wires come in and solder to the pins of the switch. But I also built in these little tracks that run around the outside. So that's to enable the, the wires to come from the speaker uh, and then also to come from the, the PCB tabs, all hidden from view uh, underneath the bracket and up to the switch. Um, and they all print really pretty well. You need fine wire to fit in them, but basically the, the type of wire that comes with uh, a, a decoder, you know, like the 8-pin harness wire, that, that kind of stuff, that does absolutely fine. So anyway, once we've designed it, uh, we export it. And the way to do that is to, to select all and then go to File, go down to Export STL. You want it in millimetres uh, and uh, ASCII format, or however you pronounce that, is, is fine. Hit export and it'll export the SketchUp file as an STL file. Okay, so for those of you who are not so familiar with 3D printing, while we use a program like SketchUp to design the object that we want to print, we then have to make it printable by a 3D printer. So we have to run the file, the STL file that we've just generated through something called the slicing software. What that does is it basically cuts all of the, the file down to individual slices or individual layers, which will then allow the printer, the 3D printer, to, to print in layers of plastic. Now, the one that I use is, is one that you have to buy. It's, I think it's about £100. It's expensive, but it's very good. Uh, and it's called Simplify 3D. There are free alternatives out there, some of which are pretty good, but I find Simplify 3D is really easy and it's excellent. And I rarely have any problems when I use it. So anyway, once we've exported uh, the 3D file into to Simplify 3D, this is what it will look like. You can see it on the bed there of, of the 3D printer. Now, with this file, it's really a pretty simple and there's not very much to it. But what we do have to do is to add some supports. Now, with 3D printing, can't print into thin air. So it lays down a layer on the glass, uh, the glass bed and then it builds up layer upon layer. But in our model here, we've got areas around the three pin um, socket here uh, and around the, the, the side here and up to here, the wee channel, where actually the, the, the bottom layer here starts some distance off the bed. So we need to put in what are known as, uh, as support structures um, or supports. Now, it's dead easy to do this in Simplify 3D. All you do is click on that button there. The Wii menu pops up, add new support structures, which is for the manual way to do it. You can sometimes do it automatically, but it's not foolproof. And then you just click wherever you want the support. So we want them here in this indentation, and here, here, and here, and here. I'll pop another one just there, and probably put one over this side as well. Let's see if we can get that. There we go. Sometimes it's a wee bit harder to get it on. There we go. We'll try for one more. Uh, come on. 
oh, that'll do. Anyway, um, I'll take more time <laughs> over it if I'm doing it for real. But anyway, so there we have it. We pop the supports in the bits that need it, flip it over. Um, now, I, I won't go through every step here, but in this section here, Simplify 3D, we have all the settings for the printing. You can download pre-programmed um, uh, profiles for this, which are excellent. But I, I've customised it a wee bit just to, to, to what I find works best for my printer. Anyway, but you set that up. Once you've set that up, you hit Prepare to Print. What that does, it slices it all down into different layers, as we can see here if we run through. There we go. Uh, all ready for the, the printer to print. So I've just moved it along here, and this is the bottom layer. This is what it'll print first. And then as the layers move, you can see that the printer is building the, the, the part up, up and up. We've got the, the layer supports there, support structures, and again there. We've got the wee uh, channel here for the wires to run through. Uh, we'll zoom it on. Um, we've got uh, the infill starting again, and we've got the over the other side, we can see that's a socket approaching there. So there we have it. Uh, that's that's the file all ready to print. So once we're happy with that, we check it. We go down to Save Toolpath to Disk, um, and we give it up an appropriate file name and save it onto our SD card, and then we can transfer that across to the 3D printer and get the part printed. Okay, so we've got the 3D part here now. Uh, the machine cooled down, it popped off very easily. Um, the first thing that I normally do with any 3D part is just to clear off any little whiskers of plastic that might be left on them. It's quite common, sometimes there's wee burrs that you might want to rub down. Um, but you'll remember that what we had to do with this one was to put in some supports for these, these structures here. So what we need to do is just to break out these supports. Now, Normally they come quite easily, um, but we are videoing this, so um, it's probably likely that because the camera's on, they're not going to come out uh, nearly so easily. So, oh no, that's not too bad. So that one's come out there, so that was the, the support on that side. And then on this side as well, we need to break these supports out. So again, it's just a matter of, uh, of pulling these supports out. Sometimes they need a wee bit of persuasion, maybe some... Uh, side cutters are sometimes necessary, other times it will come out with a wee bit of force. Uh. Okay, so now that we've got the part all cleaned up, um, we can move on to the, the switch and wiring installation side of things. Now I'm not actually going to do it for real, I'm not going to get the soldering iron out because I don't have a, I don't have a need for a, another one of these. Um, but I'll show you just roughly what, what needs to happen. Um, the wires that you need for this are those tiny wee wires that you, you get with say an 8 pin loom for a, a DCC decoder. Um, so this, as small as you can get, it's not going to carry a high current so it doesn't need to, to have much cross sectional um, area to it. Um, the, the switch is one of the little PCB mount uh, slide switches. It's a pretty pretty common um, style this and they're all generally a similar kind of size so they, they should uh, should be able to, to fit into the little pocket that would be created in the part there. Um, they're an on-on switch, so it's on in one direction, it's on in the other. Or if you just wire up two of the prongs, it's off in one and on in the other. Now, uh, you could make it more complicated. You could go for a three-way three, a three -way switch, which is off, on and on, which would allow you to have it off. It would allow you to have it straight into the speaker, and then it would allow you to have it through a resistor and into a speaker. Now, if you did that, what it would enable you to do is switch the 100 ohm speaker that came with the, the, the tester to say an, an 8 ohm speaker then you could switch in and out of series uh, a resistor so you, you're upping the impedance of the circuit uh, to allow you to, to tweak it to whether it's a lock side 3.5 or a 4 but there's not very much room on this to put one of those bigger switches so I didn't bother um, and uh, maybe that would be a project for another day but not for today. Anyway, so what you need to do with these switches uh, is to, to bend out the, the prongs. Um, they're pretty easy to do because it's very it's very soft metal really. And then just feed them through the, the holes on the, the circuit board there. Now what I did at this stage was put a tiny wee dab of super glue onto the base of the switch just to hold it in place. But uh, it's a good snug fit. 
Um, it's been designed to, to the tolerance as well for this particular switch. Um, so uh, it, it's not likely to come out easily. So on the other side here, what we have now is we've got the tabs that we really solder to the wires and we've got the wee, um, the wee depression here to run the, the wires around. So you can feed the wires around um, through to the switch and then one leg would go straight to the speaker and the other one would go through the switch and you can switch it on and off. Um, it's pretty simple, I'm not going to talk you through it all, but uh, the, the, the little channels there are in just the right place so that when you, you bring in the, the tester into the equation, um, they can pop up through the right hole there, route to the switch, route to the speaker, and all look neat and tidy. Now the one thing just to quickly mention is that uh, these holes here are designed to be about 1.8 mil. So what uh, what I did with this was I lined it all up exactly where I wanted it, um, and I held it tightly in place, and then took a, a 1.8 mil drill bit through the PCB. I uh, then screwed it in, and then I did the second one so I could have it lined up exactly where I wanted without everything moving about. But uh, there we have it anyway, we've got it screwed in, the speaker's held in, um, the wiring goes through the little channels underneath through the switch and uh, through to the outside there. So that's in a nutshell how to do it. I've not gone through absolutely every step of uh, soldering and all the rest because most folk know how to do that. Uh, but it's a really simple little project and it means that if you've got one of these old decoders, uh, decoder testers rather, and you're thinking, well, maybe I should upgrade to a new one. You really don't need to do this. This is this is going to do everything that I need it to do, certainly for the foreseeable future. Um, and uh, as I said uh, earlier on, I've made available a copy of the 3D file. And if anybody has a 3D printer, has one of these, and they want to update it, be my guest. Feel free to, to download that file and, uh, and upgrade away. I hope it's of some use to you. So just before I, uh, I finish up with the video, I thought I'd just quickly show you the, the decoder and the decoder tester working together without a, a loco in the picture. Um, just to, to show you the, the speaker being switched off uh, and, and what we can get out of the tester it's, itself. Um, now, as I say, this will work with an 8 pin, a 6 pin, a 21 pin and uh, also a, a hard wire decoder. So if you've chopped off the pin and you're about to um, set it into a loco or DMU or whatever it might be, you can test it here beforehand. So just as um, as you do with a locomotive when you're inserting the pin, get it the right way around. Orange is number one, number one is, is noted here, and plug it in. Now because this is a lock sound 4 and we've got a 4 ohm speaker, we don't want to have the, the 100 ohm speaker in the equation. So we'll come down here, it's off just now, so we'll leave it off. Um, and we can we can give it a shot. So let's just start things up. There we go. We've got the sound. We've got the motion. Got the lights, the forward light. We've got the reverse light. So it's a, it's as simple as that. So there we have it, a really simple modification uh, that adds, uh, adds life to this old decoder tester so that will be good for, for many years to come. Um, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. It was a wee bit different, this one. It might not be uh, relevant to everybody, but uh, it's a, a project which I've done, I've enjoyed doing, and I thought it might be useful for other folks. So anyway, I'll be back soon, I hope, uh, with another video uh, and hopefully some progress on the layout itself. So thanks very much for watching and cheerio for now. Bye-bye.